30. We made it to the end. 30 days of 30 days. <laughs> so I've been coming at it every day and sharing composition techniques and tools with you we've gone through a lot more than 30 it wasn't just one a day some days i shared five or six and uh yeah it was uh it was been a lot of fun all right uh okay oh we've got a couple of people in here already and uh so sally hi mike hi will g'day will as well thank you uh you guys have been amazing turning up it's uh it's great you guys help keep me going for these 30 days so much so that uh I might do it again some stage. <laughs> I'm thinking about uh, doing a Snapseed app and going through all of the different tools because let's have a quick look. Uh, let's just bring up a quick photo. Let's have a look at here. Having a look inside Snapseed, what have we got there? This 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Whoops. Oh, go back. Uh, 25. There's 28 tools there. <laughs> and then if we get into the styles, there's there's another one. So there's 29. I reckon we could do 30. Get into the stacks. Go into that. I reckon we could do it. I reckon we could extract another 30 days out of that. What do you reckon? <laughs> but, um, but this has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a bit of a learning curve for me, getting used to going live, uh, getting through some technical issues. You, you've, and you've been really patient with me. Thank you. Audio is still something that I'm working on, so next time I come back and do another series like this, it'll uh, hopefully sound a lot better. Uh, I'm looking at getting maybe a full-on uh, pod, uh, podcast kit, it's got a roadcaster, and be able to mix and, and improve the, the uh, audio there. Maybe get rid of this, I'm not sure. Uh, I use this for um, client work, for corporate clients delivering workshops because then I can hear them and talking to them as well so I need something like this but anyway I've digressed let's uh let's play the intro and then we'll get into it all right so we're covering today gesture and interaction and uh this is one that I'm really I've been looking forward to doing this that's why I've kind of saved it till last because it's one of those things that uh and I've mentioned this a few times now is that Composition is about so much more than just placing the subject somewhere and getting all your different focal points and, and other elements and how they all interact with each other and all that sort of thing. We've talked about having to also introduce depth and uh, and the kind of introducing a narrative to, this, to the photo, a, a story. We've talked about all that. And it's one of the things I struggled with was the storytelling side of it. So this is really cool to, to get into this and, and start talking about identifying stories in a photo and then in the composition it's important because the composition is about a point of fixation a subject now not all photos have to have a subject but I think it really helps if there is especially if you're trying to improve your composition uh, of course you can have abstract photos you know close-ups of the uh, the inside of a mushroom or something like that so there's no real clear subject it's just abstract just lines and and something that's visually balanced and and that sort of thing but uh, yeah I think it's it's important to have a subject when we when we're trying to improve our composition because so much kind of revolves around having a, a visual anchor the main element that draws our attention and then using hierarchy of different elements we then kind of go on that visual journey and it's that visual literacy if you like that's that's where it gets really fun and uh i know I, I it's an area that i struggle with and uh it's an area that i've spent months geeking out and researching over a hundred different compositional techniques and tools when i've mentioned that to my photographer friends they're like oh are you kidding i know about a 12 <laughs> so uh and, and it's because you don't really think about gesture and interaction when you think about composition. But it's so important because seeing having that gesture provides that that story. And that story is kind of really important for composition because you want to guide them, the viewer around the photo. Interaction is it's it's part of the definition. It's where elements in the frame are and how they all interact with each other. So Interaction is kind of composition, but we're going to talk about both of them. We're going to talk about the differences between them. So what I'm going to do is is bring up my course, my Stronger Photo Composition 4-Step System. 
and apologies if I'm sounding a bit funny. I've got hay fever. <laughs> it's springtime, and uh, in our forum, our our actually our, how ironic our, the topic in our forum is spring gardens, and uh, and I'm feeling the spring garden <laughs> at the moment with the hay fever. So gesture. Uh, I'll just read this. It's, it's uh, one of the best secret techniques to capture a great street photograph that includes gesture and interaction. Because you kind of, when I when I when I play around with street photography, it's normally because it's in the middle of the day and other things, you know, the the beautiful reflections on the river or something like that, or or early morning when you can get the bees kind of in the gardens and they've slowed down. And it's a great time. When I've kind of lost all those other genres that I enjoy and I and I get back to the middle of the day, street photography is great because you look for those harsh shadows of the midday sun and you say so you're looking for all these scenes that you're setting up and then you're waiting for a person to walk through it. And when you're wait, waiting for that person to walk through, that's what makes a snapshot transform into a, a, a wow photo is when you start setting up being patient, preparing, anticipating, and waiting for that person, getting that that decisive moment where that person comes through and they display some sort of gesture. Now, it could be the way they're walking. It could be the, the way they're holding their hands and arms, their gait, all this sort of thing, whether they're, whether they're looking up, looking down, whether they're in, engrossed in their phone. That That's kind of what gesture is in, in, in street photography. All right, so going back to my thing here. Uh, uh, thank you, Sally. Yes, I need to wear my mask. <laughs> I've got my mask here. Yep. <laughs> I know, I know. Not going anywhere. Uh, I actually went and had a COVID test this morning. So uh, so I'm stuck at home at the moment until I get the result. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, okay. So gestures are a snapshot in time. They capture the essence of what's happening as it happens. That's what makes it cool in street photography because you, you're capturing that that snapshot, that uh, that moment time, and it's and when you're doing that, like I've talked about, it's it's all that sort of thing. But if you're like me and you're a bit of a bit of a people watcher, yeah, you go shopping and you go into the food court, you sit down, you know, I don't read a paper, I read people. <laughs> I just I love it. I'm I'm a people watcher, and and it's so much fun to sit there and look and and, and look at those visual cues and go, okay. Who are these people? What's brought them here? Is it one person on their own, or is it a couple of people? What's their relationship? Are they are they uh, friends, or are they um, mother and daughter, father and, and daughter, or whatever it is? And you kind of think, okay, what's what's the vibe? What are they talking about? And not in a judgy way, but just in a in an interesting way, where you, where you look at those gestures and you look at the interaction between the two. And uh, yeah, I, I just find it I just find it really interesting. Uh, okay. So gesture can inc- can also occur. This is interesting. Gesture can also occur in inanimate objects like a crooked leg on a table. So it's it's something that's out of the norm. Okay. So if you think of think of a table or just a, a bench or something like that, it's got four legs, and one of them is crooked. So that's kind of a gesture because it it infers and suggests and just and gestures is all suggestive so it suggests that hey this table is unstable and that kind of adds to the narrative adds to the uh to the mood of the photo that sort of thing all right uh okay looking for gestures forces you to observe and analyze the intricate details of your surroundings that's that's one of the things i love about photography is that it slows you down and uh, makes you focus on the details and the little things and everything else you you're thinking about just kind of recedes into the background. So what you're looking for, does the person have something significant about their posture, their gait? Do they stand with weight on one leg, both legs? Do they interact with others, if at all? Uh, What are their hands doing? Uh, That's a big one. What are their hands doing? And that's something you see that quite often in photography themes is is hands because it's it's just really interesting. All right. Okay, do people look at other people in the aisle? Do they look down? Okay, I've got a photo here that I wanted to show you. Now, you've probably seen this one before. This was at uh, Baker Street in, in London. And uh, and I actually, when, when I first took this photo, what I was trying to achieve was to capture this, this lady on her, on her own. And I, I just loved the lighting. 
I loved the pool of lighting at the top there. I loved all the textures. Dramatically uh, improved converting it to a black and white. In color, it still looks nice in color, but black and white, the... Uh, when it's black and white, you can just go to town with, with tones and textures and, and make things crunch and go a bit more grungy and it's more forgiving. And so that, I did that and uh, and I went further along the tracks and I, and I saw Hugh Laurie here and zoom in. The, oop, I'm in the way now. Let me move myself out of the way. And he was further down the platform and, I was, and it was down at a quiet end of the platform and I'm, and I'm waiting, waiting for something like this to happen and it just didn't happen. <laughs> so what I did was I took the photo anyway and then I blended the two photos together using what was Adobe Mix. It's now Adobe Express and uh, it's a subscription to do that but there's lots of other apps out there that you can blend two photos together. On the iPhone, I use Superimpose X. That's another good one. But what I loved about this was his gesture and he's kind of looking at me as <laughs> and he doesn't look too impressed but he's looking at me as if to say what are you doing why why are you taking a photo of that uh of that lady and uh <laughs> i just yeah i just i just really um excuse me uh yeah and that's the gesture i'm talking about all right okay let me just scroll down interaction okay so one of the main objectives. Well, try that again. <laughs> one of the main objectives in photo composition is to place different elements and observe how they all interact with each other. Now we've talked about things like uh, uh, implied line of sight. So if somebody is in the scene, like a person or an inanimate object, like a a car, a boat, a fence, something that that has a sense of direction, it's pointing towards something, that can imply. A line of sight where your eye picks up on them and then follows that line a leading line s curve z curve all that sort of fun stuff uh, a regulating line if you're a gardener <laughs> what your eye kind of moves across and that's the interaction is that they're looking over there so you kind of go over there and you, and you move move around so it's one of the things i really enjoy about composition and, and panoramics are great because panoramics you've got more space to kind of introduce all these things. If you take a square photo, you're kind of limited with just a couple of movements around, but a nice wide or, or, or a panoramic vertical is also really good. You can just move around and introduce, we've talked about this, you can introduce that rhythm, the pace, all that sort of cool stuff, taking it to the next level. Uh, what have I got here? Okay. Uh, all right. So interaction... Yeah, it's visual weight. You can either create a balanced, a symmetrical balance, or a, 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 uh, introduce visual tension with that interaction. You know, we've talked about uh, active space where somebody's in the frame and they're moving towards something. And let me just have a look to see if I've got that here, that example. I, do, I have been deleting these as I've gone because... Yep, no, I don't have it there. It's all good. doesn't matter. Uh, so active spaces where in the frame there's plenty of space ahead of them. If uh, if they're right on the edge and they look like they're just about to step off a cliff and go out, well, they're interacting with the scene, aren't they? I know it introduces visual tension and imbalance, that sort of thing, but it's still interaction. They're interacting and you're thinking about how they're interacting with what's going on around you. Uh, okay, uh, interaction... The most obvious interaction is people with people, people with pets, people with the environment. So how is the person interacting with the environment? Uh, yeah, we talked about hands. I've got this example here of hands. Let me bring this one up. Okay, there we go. All right, this is one of my favorite photos of all time. And it's actually quite a, quite a personal one because this one was when my youngest was born and... When, okay, so he was born and then stayed, and I was sleeping on the, on the, um, in the chair that night and woke up in the middle of the night. My wife was being rushed off to ICU and it was all panic and, and that everyone was expressing to me just how serious this was, what was happening. And she basically had preeclampsia or help syndrome where you have really, uh, high blood pressure and, um, uh, gets into the liver and all that sort of thing. So you're at risk of having seizures and uh and and 
she was in ICU under amazing care, really, really grateful and fortunate. And part of that meant that uh, my wife couldn't, she couldn't hold Riley. And, and that was really, really hard. And this photo was one of those first couple, it wasn't the first time, <laughs> would have been great, would add to the story, but it was one of the first times that my wife was able to uh, be close to him and you can imagine how difficult that is, a new mum wanting that, um, that, that contact, that sort of thing. And, 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 and this, I think this photo just kind of captures all of that. You can see, uh, I can't remember what that's called, out of the hand and, and Riley reaching out. Now, step four of the system is editing. And here with the editing, I converted to a black and white. I blurred off the edges. Uh, oh, actually, this isn't the, this isn't the final product. The uh, final one here, I actually, the top left corner I, where it's a bit of, you can see Joe's neck, I kind of made that all black. So it just brought your attention back in there again. But you can see there, I actually went and Riley's knuckles, I actually whitened them off a bit. <laughs> so it looks like he's gripping really hard. <laughs> I'm kind of on the line there of overdoing it, but that's okay. <laughs> um yeah, and uh, so yeah, it's 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 pretty cool, and it's the it's the it's the gesture that um that really works. Which camera am I looking at? This one. <laughs> I'm getting be I'm getting better at this. Uh, so yeah, it's it's the it's the sorry the interaction. So it's the interaction, you know, holding the finger and that sort of thing. It is, and then that gesture is the white knuckles. So that's the gesture. The interaction is is the interaction between the two elements, and the gesture is uh, that what makes it different, what makes it stand out, what is actually that decisive moment. So when you combine the two of them together, it just it just works. It works really well. All right. So what have I got here? Um, okay. So what, what are you saying there, Sally? Uh, what? Is that what it's called, is it? A canala. I'm not sure what you mean there. Is that is that... In the hand, is that what that's called? Yeah, not sure. Okay, uh, what else did I have here? Da, da, da. I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, I just wanted to dis differentiate between the two and then using the two of them, being able to understand that like everything else in this whole four-step system is once you start combining and stacking, I originally called it the um, photo... Competi uh, photo composition stacking system but I tried that with a few people and they're like I don't understand is that like focus stacking in macro like what what do you mean by stacking so it was totally it just did kind of make, kind of make sense so that's why I stuck with uh, the the stronger photo composition system but that's the secret source that's the secret source is, is going into each of those four steps grabbing at least one and then all of a sudden you've got four different techniques or tools grab a couple of them like this is this is inside both of these are inside step number three which is the position of different elements so once you position uh, have that interaction and you have that gesture you can see there's step number three I've actually got two there already and then with step number four I I've uh, softened the edges which has brought the attention back in step number four I also whitened and 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 brightened up the knuckles. So that's two things I've done there. So all of a sudden I've got six different compositional techniques. And with this photo, if I go in there and break it down and go, okay, now I've also gone around and did border patrol and I've softened the focus around the edges, I've darkened the edges. I have, uh, let's, let's have a quick look. Let's have a challenge with this. Let's have a quick look. What else have I got here? I've got a, uh, a Barak diagonal. I have asymmetrical yep it's asymmetrical I have visual balance uh, what else have I got uh, oh there's so many um, <laughs> anyway I've digressed haven't I so that said I think I'll wrap it up there and oh here we go from Sally okay further description here we go a a canola is a tube that can be inserted into the body often for the delivery or removal of fluid for the gathering of samples. Cool. There we go. That's what it is. Thank you. <laughs> I've learnt my thing for the day. I'm here trying to help you guys learn something, just one single thing. If, if you've learnt one single thing out of out of this 
each day, then that's brilliant. I've learnt my thing for the day. <laughs> Thanks, Ali. Uh, alrighty. So that's it. 30 days. We've done 30 days. That's pretty cool. I won't go through the whole list again. I did that yesterday. <laughs> if you did, if you're watching the replay of this and uh, and you want to know what the full list is, yesterday I, I did that. So go back to day 29. Uh, I think I'll go back. I'm thinking about going back and changing all the thumbnails for them all. But as you can understand. 30 different thumbnails, it was easier just to switch the two going back and forth. Uh, so I've got a little bit of work to do to try and um, improve the reach and, and that sort of thing with with this this series. But uh, but it's been a lot of fun. I'm kind of a bit disappointed to, to stop, but <laughs> but I'm coming back. I'm going to come back and do Snapseed and uh, and then we'll, we'll see how we go with that. So uh, thanks, Will and Sally, for joining me again tonight. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming along and... Uh, and for everyone else watching the replay, thank you. Leave a comment. Reach out any time about any of the uh, compositional techniques. And if you want further explanation or the other examples, I now have the community tab on the on the YouTube channel, which is really cool. Uh, oh, thanks, Ellie. Really enjoyed. Gotta wait for it to come up here. Enjoy the inf informative thirty days. That's that's brilliant. Fantastic. All right. Well. With that, I'm going to sign off and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.